Here she is. Welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about my new snake. Yes, I did get another snake. But before we get into all of that, I wanted to thank Show Me Snakes Reptile Expo for sponsoring today's video. I've actually worked with Show Me Snakes a lot over the past few years. I feel like we kind of grew together and we even did the tarantula takeover together. Yeah, he's the one responsible for the show. Actually, Kat's responsible for the show. So if it goes wrong, it was all her fault. There's also going to be another tarantula takeover show, which will be May 15th here in St. Louis. So if that's something that interests you, definitely mark your calendars. And if you're not from St. Louis, definitely check their website because they are having shows pop up all over and there might be one happening right next to you. So thank you again, Show Me Snakes, and you can find out more information and the link in my description. Okay, so before I show you my snake and like talk about it, I kind of wanted to like touch base on what happened with my Mexican Black King snake and why I haven't gotten another and all of that. So I said for a really long time I wouldn't be getting another snake unless it was a Mexican black king snake. October 2020 I finally made the plunge and I got myself a Mexican black king snake. I named her Ouija. She was growing great, she was eating great, and I set up this really nice big exoterra for her to have some room to grow in. Heated thermostat, did everything by the books, did everything right, made a video when I first got her putting it all together, and then my husband fed her and she took it, you know, all is well, and then uh, the next feeding comes up and we find her dead with her last meal next to her. So we can kind of see that she must have taken her last meal and then regurgitated it and then died. It seems like it was like a total freak thing. It doesn't seem like something that happens often. I mean, regurgitation can happen for a number of reasons, but typically it's not like a fatal thing. And I mean, the way we found her, we just kind of thought that maybe something something went wrong on the way out. I, I mean, that was our best guess. It's kind of hard to tell. I get asked all the time how my Mexican black king snake Ouija is doing. I, I was asked a lot in my All My Pets video where it was all my pets besides my spiders when I talked about all my snakes and all that. A lot of people commented asking me what happened to her because they noticed that she was not in that video and I just kind of kept directing people to that post. But yeah, so that is what happened and why I don't have a Mexican black king snake anymore. And I talked on Instagram about maybe getting another sometime down the line. So a couple weeks ago was the NARBC meet and greet reptile expo thing that I went to and I actually did do quite a little bit of window shopping specifically for snakes. And I really wanted to get like a Mexican black king snake. In fact, I saw a couple that were really tempting, but I just wasn't like exactly prepared or ready or whatever. It just, it, it wasn't, it, it wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes you're looking for an animal and you find that animal and it just does not feel right. That's how it felt. So I found a couple Mexican black king snakes among other snakes that I really liked and I thought about getting them but I ultimately ended up not buying any snakes at all at that expo. It's not that I don't want another Mexican black king snake it's that I just am not I'm just simply not ready for one, I guess. I, I hyped myself up for so long. Like that was like my dream snake. I wanted a Mexican black king snake since before we even got our first snake, okay? And that was like four years ago. So it's been it's been a minute. Will there be a time sometime in the future? Yes, I do feel like it's a possibility. Anyway, so I did not get another Mexican black king snake yet at least probably won't for a while, but so what happened was I went to go get some mice. Um, I needed some mice feeders for our snakes. And when I went, it was just like a random like Wednesday night or something. And I went by myself and I just saw this snake. And and I'll put a picture here. I just, there. I always, every time I go to this pet store, Tropical World Pets, every time I go there, I always look at their snakes because I consider snakes one of my favorite animals and always a possibility. <laughs> like I feel like I could probably get another. And I made eye contact with this little snake and it was a ghost Hondurian milk snake. So milk snakes and keek snakes are very similar. Right away, I just, I knew it was coming home with me. Like I knew it, that was my snake. You know what I'm saying? Like I just saw it, I clicked with it right away. I asked if I could hold it. I held it and it was just like so cool and I said yeah this is definitely the snake so I purchased the snake and I'm gonna show you guys now so this is the enclosure it is just a 12 by 12 by 12 exoterra I know it's kind of small if you remember for the Mexican black king snake I did like a really big one and I set up this big elaborate enclosure I didn't want to do that again because I felt like it might have been a mistake to go that big right 
right away. I never really saw her. In fact, I didn't even know exactly when she died because she was always hidden. I just got used to never seeing her. And I also couldn't lift up the enclosure myself to look under it to see like her hiding on the bottom or hiding behind the styrofoam background. So yeah, it was just really hard to monitor her. So I decided with this milk snake, I was going to go smaller and actually just like grow with the snake. So I just went with a really simple little exoterra lots of substrate so like don't get me wrong she still has plenty of room to hide and she does I, it's it's really hard for me to find her but the good thing about this is that i can actually peek she likes to hide right back here and the styrofoam a lot so like that's usually my first place to look and that's where she was just now when i took her out but she saw the light and decided to hide so we're gonna have to dig her out a little bit we fed her for the first time about three days ago and she did take a pinky with no issues which is really awesome Awesome. It's always really reassuring when they eat and they don't like hesitate um, And she's also on frozen That's why I like to buy from tropical world pets because by the time their snakes are for sale They're already on frozen and they're typically much better at being handled They kind of prepare them to go out front for sale before they just like put them on sale They don't just like throw them out there. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so I'm gonna warn you guys She's really hard to catch because she is very fast you know, she's still a nervous baby, which is totally expected. So as you see, this is her enclosure. It's really simple. We just have like a little water dish, of course. And then I got this plant from Petco and I just really like it. It, it reminds me a little bit of like a pine tree or something. I don't know. It, it looks more real than your typical fake plastic plant. So I really like it. And it's on this piece of like actual wood too, which makes it even better. And then I have this big cork round. I haven't seen her use any of this to hide in yet because obviously she just really wants the aspen to hide, but you know, it's always good to decorate a little bit. All right. So let's try to dig her out. I might get nipped, but it's okay. Like she's still really little. There she goes. I hear her back here. Hi. There she goes. See how fast she goes? <laughs> She's so quick. Ugh. Try to remove this without breaking it. Cause I do, I do actually like that she hides back there cause then at least I like know the first place to look. So I'm not gonna like leave that out or anything. Here she is. Oh. You're good. You're good. It's so hard to get her to hold still long enough, but if you look at her little face, just I love that black stripe over her eyes. I just love her like black and white and like she's pink also. So I actually decided to name her Mimic You. Yeah. I really just get a mimic you vibe from her. I don't know like what it is. Maybe it's her colors or something, but I think it's like a perfect fitting name for her. Also because mimic you is a ghost fairy type Pokemon and she's a ghost Hondorian milk snake. As you see, she really calms down. The more you handle her, the more she just calms down. So yeah, I am going to put her little background back in. Since that's where she likes to hide most. See how good she's being? Oh, I do see a poop in here also. She has a good little poop in there. And her water dish. And it is all set. She feels really secure on my hand now. She's like squeezing my hand. All right, so what a good girl. Let's go ahead and let her go back in her little a little yep there she goes <laughs> right to digging and 
that's what's been up you guys I wanted to tell you guys sooner but I just wanted to make sure you know she settled in okay and she was eating and pooping and stuff like that so I just wanted to like you know be cautious introducing her to the channel so that's mimic you I hope you guys enjoyed like this video if you did subscribe if you're not and, and you want to be don't forget I have an Instagram that is probably way too much it's at tarantula.cat you can go follow me you there I also have a patreon podcast and a teespring it is all linked down below and I will see you guys soon let's get into the patreon pet picks